Namaste, everybody. Much love. Welcome to Maria True Seeker Cruz channel. And today we're going to be talking about um, a little bit more into the Santeria and the Orishas and the astrology associated with the Orishas. First, we're going to give um, tribute to um, Eliwa. He's the door and um, door opener and door closer to the to your crossroads to all paths. To the Lord of all paths, illustrious warrior, immortal prince, I offer this humble prayer. Keep away from my adult all matters of evil and guard my home and those who reside in it. When I awake or are asleep, present or not, I ask Olofi God to bless you, Elegua, beloved Lord of all roads, Ashe. Palatento <laughs> Santeria, the creator and all deities of Santeria will be Aludamal. He is the most important state of existence, regarded as being all in compo composing. No gender can be assigned. Hence, it is common to hear reference to it or they. Although this is meant to address a somewhat singularity, they are the owner of all heads. For during human creation, Alumar gave Emi, the breath of life, to humankind. And this Alumar is supreme. The creation that the um, Aruba regarded is the account where during a strange stage in this process, the truth was sent to confirm the habitability of the newly formed planets. The earth being one of these which was visited but deemed too wet for conventional life. After a successful period of time, a number of divinities led by Obatala were sent to accomplish the task of helping earth develop its crust. On one of their visits to the realm, the arch divinity of Batala took the stage equipped with a mollusk that concealed some form of soil, winged beasts, and some cloth-like material. The contents were emptied onto what soon became a large mound on the surface of the water, and soon after, the winged beasts began to scatter this around until the point where it gradually, gradually made into a large patch of dry land. The various indentations they created eventually became the hills and the valleys. Obatala leaped onto a high ground and named the place Ife. The land became fertile and plant began to flourish. And Ife is an ancient city of Aruba in the southwestern Nigeria. The city is located in present-day Osun State. Ife is about 218 kilometers northeast of Lagos. From handfuls of earth, he began to mold figurines. Meanwhile, as this was happening on earth, Alulumar 
gathered the gases from the far reaches of space and sparked an explosion that shaped into a fireball. He subsequently set into Ife, where it dried much of the land and simultaneously began to bake the most motionless figurines. It was at this point that Alulumar released the breath of life to blow across the land and the figurines slowly came into being as the first people of Ife. An Orisha is an entity that possesses the capability of reflecting some of the manifestation of Aludamar. Yoruba Orishas are often described as intermediaries between humankind and the supernatural. The term is also translated as deities or divinities or gods. Orisha are revered for having control over specific elements by nature, thus being better referred to as the divinities or imole. Even so, there are those of their number that they are more akin to ancient heroes or sages. These are best addressed as de demodedes, even though the term Orisha is often used to describe both classes of divine entities, it is properly reserved for the former one. Now, our vast universe is a home to a host of celestial bodies, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, and Uranus, who were worshiped by all indigenous cultures around the globe under numerous names. They have influenced the actions of man since time. Since time, the majority of religious mythology was influenced by the astrology. Was it any wonder why man sought out guidance from the heavens? Between 10,000 to 6,000 BC, the Africans of the Nile Valley and Great Lakes region devised a stellar calendar. In 4,000 BC, the solar calendar will mark the era of a new age, a dynastic period extended its greatness through an entire millennium. The pyramid builders and monument architects erected monolithic structures that till this day continue to marvel modern architect. The foundation of culture's spiritual system influenced by celestial bodies and their movement in the heavens inspired them to erect monuments that mark the solstice and equinox as well as the transits of the planets. The veneration of the ancestors was also determined by the celestial movements as translated in the Book of the Dead and the Book of Coming Forth by Day. The coffin texts and pyramid texts, these religious texts are paper scrolls or cryptic description of allegorical stories of the deities that reside in the heavens that have considerably influenced their daily lives to such a high degree that magnificent temples were erected in their honor that are still in existence today. The descendants of these cultures who migrated from the Nile Valley and Great Lakes region over a period of generations become, became known as the Yoruba of Southwestern Nigeria in West Africa, whose cultural practices were and still are deeply submerged in ancestral veneration. Despite the emergence of Christian missionaries and Islamic jihads, they are still resides with this cultural context. The traditional Yoruba belief system is known as Ifa, acknowledging the creator, Aludumar, through the essence of nature. Aludumar, the creator force, birthed the heavens into existence, thus bringing into existence of the extensions of the creator, better known as Orisha. A practice consisting of acknowledgement of creator through the forces of nature within the elements of earth, wind, water, and fire, there exists an entire pantheon of African deities known as Orisha. The indwelling spirit of consciousness that plays a significant role from the heavens in the daily lives of the practitioners of the spiritual traditions of the Ifa, the Yura Oruba believe that the Orisha who guides the consciousness of an individual. It is said that there are exist 400 Orisha, facets of nature, which are earthly representations of the cosmos, heavenly energies, and therefore 
nothing exists or happens in the sky that does not have its influence or vibration on earth within nature's elements and also in human behavior. The traditional Aruba believe that everything within nature on earth possesses a consciousness, plant, animal, mineral, and man. The original character, characters are based on the characteristic nature of the plants, their environments, such as oppositions, triumphs, sextiles, and conjunctions in astrology and astronomy. These celestial events are interpreted from the Yoruba own cultural perspective. The, if you could imagine the beginning and the end of a circle, you will come to understand the never ending cycle of creation, reincarnation, transate, tra reincarnation, transition, and that all things created have destiny that is influenced by the heavens. In traditional, Ifa, the Orisha or or God of Destiny is Oromila, also known as the Oracle Orisha. Within the divination system of the Yoruba, the Op Opan Ifa, which is a divining, divining board used to use in Ifa divination, is similar to that of the astrologer. Astro oh my goodness, I can't even um, talk right now. It is similar to that of the astrological birth or natal chart that is divided in 12 houses equaling 30 degrees, the distance it takes the sun to travel in a day. The 12 houses of the natal chart are areas of life governed by a particular planet. In regards to the traditional Yoruba cultural perception of one's existence, these houses be ruled by a particular essence in the nature of Orusha. For instance, In, um, in the first house, the self or outward appearance and surface personality is Aries. The ram, ruled by Mars, within the Yoruba tradition, the Orisha of iron and steel is Agum, the warrior god possessing assertive and aggressive, aggressive characteristic rules the first house. It is Agum who is the patron of soldiers, police officers, surgeons, railroad workers, welders, bodybuilders, or anyone employed to work with iron and steel. The second house of material possession and money is Taurus, ruled by Venus, the goddess of love. Within the Yoruba pantheon, Orisha, of the rivers and lakes, and all the bodies of fresh water, Oshun, the mother of abundance dominates this area of life, motherhood, wealth, and love. The third house is the house of duality, balance, communication, high energy, is Gemini ruled by Mercury, the cosmic twins of Oruba pantheon, the Ibaji, dominate this area of life, they are their yin and yang, positive and negative energies existing within our life. The fourth house pertains to issues surrounding the home, maternal, protective, nurturing, and instinctive qualities dominate in cancer ruled by the moon. These are the attributes of the Orisha Yemoya, Orisha of the ocean whose ebb and flow of the tides are a result of the moon, which is an attribute of her as well. So Yemaya also represents the, um, she represents the moon it's also. Avatala represents the sun. The fifth house, Leo, ruled by the sun, a house of enjoyment, romance, children, and most of all, creativity in all aspects of existence. Here the illumination of the sun is reflected, reflected of the wisdom of Oromila, the Risha of destiny who sits by the side of Oludumar, the creator god of the Yoruba. It is within the aspect of existence where man chooses his or her destiny and it is recorded by Oromila in the presence of Olumar, at which time of life is given to man upon his or her emergence on earth, hence the creation of man. For the sixth house, which is Virgo, the house of work, health, and service ruled by Berkeley, 
out of the Yoruba pantheon of Orisha, it is Ishu or Elewa, the Orisha of the crossroads, who is responsible for communication in every aspect of existence between the Orishas, the ancestors, man, and Oluduman. His realm of ex existence lies between the spirit world and the material world. His domain is within the crossroads. When the sun, moon, or planet crosses over into a various zodiac signs to assert a particular influence, this is an aspect of a shu or elewa, working to ensure that the other orisha are able to serve their purposes. He is also known as a divine messenger, the most important orisha within the pantheon. His influence may also be found in the third house as well. In the seventh house which is Libra. Um, partnership is a house of balance and harmony. Um, a trait of Libra who is ruled by Venus. Here is another domain of Oshun that falls within the realm of love, romance, and marriage. Oshun replenishes in elegance, beauty, grace, artistry, charm, charisma, and refinement. She is Yoruba goddess of love. The eighth house, which is Scorpio and ruled by Pluto. This is a house of absolute power. Scorpio is one of the most powerful signs of the Zodiac. Is it any wonder that the warriors Orisha, Oya, also the storm goddess of the Yoruba dominates the eighth house of transformation, regeneration, death, sex, reincarnation, and other people and other people's matters of like in money, inheritance, and financing. She is the hurricane that form on the west coast of Africa, traveling across the Atlantic with winds that generating anywhere from 70 to 200 miles an hour. She is the tornadoes and twisters that uproot trees and houses. She is the only force within nature that has the ability to change the face of the earth from, from her destructive winds. This powerful Risha is also responsible for carrying the spirits of the newly departed to the spirit world. In Nigeria, it is Oya who dominates the crack marketplace. In some parts of Nigeria, she is Oya of the Nigeria River, a force within nature to be respected and a most formidable warrior attribute when invoked to fight for women's rights. In the ninth house, which is Sagittarius, on the house of, of higher education, religion, philosophy, and divine law. It's ruled by Jupiter. Um, the planet of expansion, growth, and good fortune is the largest body in our solar system besides the sun. This will be the Yoruba's planetary counterpart of Obatala, the father of Orisha, owner of white cloth. He is a purity and illumination at its zenith. zenith. The Orisha of wisdom and intelligence, ruling the physical body, his domain is all white fluids of the body, the skeletal st structure in the brain. The 10th house, which is Capricorn, house of career status and reputation, and it's um, ruled by Saturn. The Aruba pantheon of Orisha associates Babalu Aye with the planet Saturn, which is the taskmaster. Saturn is associated with patient, with patience, discipline, limitation, and structure. Babaluaye is considered the Orisha of the earth. He can bring forth either prosperity or sickness and disease. For, for is also known as the deity of smallpox. In Catholic, in Catholicism, he is referred to as Saint Lazarus. In the eleventh house, which is Aquarius. Ruled by Uranus, um, it, it's upheaving, rebellion, and sudden unexpected events. Um, the traits of the Aurora Orisha Shango, the Orisha of thunder and lightning and fire. During the course of history, when Uranus was expecting of transiting Pluto, this was a, a time of great change through acts of war and war slave uprising and rebellions, especially in the Caribbean islands. The civil rights era was violent and turbulent. 
as well, bringing out the great change. This historical events throughout history, as violent as they would be associated with the war aspects of not only Shango, but the Orisha Ogu and Oya. This fiery energy of the heavens denotes aggressive and assertive influences of the heavenly bodies within the Yoruba pantheon, such as Orisha, could be called upon for protection from one's enemy. In the 12th house, which is Pisces, it's ruled by Neptune, is deeply submerged in secrecy, prone to illusionary fantasies of reality. This house is centered of seclusion and spirituality. This house of this house of the subconscious is dominated by Olokun, the Orisha of the ocean floor. Deep and mysterious his realm is. The old Oruba proverb says that nobody knows what lies in the ocean floor. His aspects are reflected in the dream time, the subconscious, and the altered state of consciousness when one enters spirit possession, ritual and various levels of initiation and numerous rites of passage. Olakun is considered to be the star of Africa. He will be considered the owner of the great mystery systems of Africa, known as many names, sparks within the genius within our being, activating our super subconscious. And for right now, that is all. Talked about some of the Orishas and um, their similarities to the um, to astrology and to the ruling planets. And that's it for right now. Namaste. I hope you guys enjoy a little bit about the Santeria and the Orishas and um, also having them also within the astrology itself too so thanks you guys much love namaste Mwah.